Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Agile Basics video series with me, Alan Kelly. Um, today's topic is visualise work. Visualise. Agile has lots of ways in which work is visualised. We want to see the work, we want to understand the work. I've got a few examples here, I'm going to talk you through a few examples. I'm also going to talk about why visualising your work is important. We visualise because we need to learn, we want to learn. Seeing is a very powerful learning tool. When we see our work, we understand our work. When we understand our work, we can learn from our work. And when we learn, we can then act. One of the great things about seeing, visualising our work, is that we can share that sight, that vision, that understanding with others on our team. A couple of pieces of advice on visualisations. We want them to be simple. We don't want to use a lot of our mental energy understanding what the thing we're looking at is trying to tell us. We want the thing we're looking at to be simple so we can use our mental energy to think about the message that is being conveyed and improve our understanding. The more people see, the more they will learn. We want to visualise more and more stuff. We want to make it clearer and clearer what's going on to improve their learning. As I said, here are some examples. I like to colour code work. So I put business facing work on blue cards. Blue work is something that means something to the business. It has business value, business benefit. We try and keep these pieces of work as small as possible. Some people call them stories, some people call them user stories, some people call them product backlog items or minimally marketable features or whatever you like. Quite often I just call them blues. These are pieces of work the business wants to deliver some benefit. Now, although they're small, they're often too big, so we break them down. We will break them down to whites. White cards are task cards. These are things members of the team need to do, often in order to build part of the blue. But there might be some other tasks as well. Whites are the things that occupy most of the developer or the testers or other team members' days. They are doing white cards, they're moving white cards. And then, reds. Guess what I use reds for? Give you a moment to think. Most people don't require too much thought about this. Red is universally in our society a warning colour. We have red traffic lights telling us to stop. We have red blood telling us something is wrong. We use red as a sensor me mechanism in games like football or soccer. Um, I use red cards for bugs, faults, rework, things really shouldn't be there. Things we don't want to be there, but are there. Things we need to deal with. Things we want to work towards not having. In my ideal world, all our work is blues and whites. and We don't have any red work. Um, unfortunately, reality doesn't often work out like that, so we accept there is some red work. When we colour code our work, again, we can understand it. We can see the colours can speak to us. When you've got your work on colour-coded cards, you can put them on a board. This is a physical board. I will encourage you to use a physical board. I do think physical boards are better than electronic boards. But right now, I don't want to get into a conversation about physical versus electronic. If you're using an electronic system, everything I have to say should still apply. If you look at this board, you can see what the team are doing. You can get an idea of what's happening there. If you're actually with this board, if you could physically walk up and touch that board, you could read the card, you'd have a better understanding still. The board is a place where the team can see the score. The board is a place where the team can get shared understanding. The board is the attention to stand-up meetings. The board shows you the state of play, the score. Boards are great. Uh, they satisfy some need within us as well to actually show movement in our work. This isn't the place to talk about boards in detail. I'm telling you they're good. I'm telling you they help visualisation. I've recorded a separate video. It's about 
13, 14 minutes long on board design. If you'd like to look at the video, there it is, that's the URL, you can find it there. This, as you can see, is a rather crude board. It is some magic whiteboard stuck on a glass wall with some post-it notes and cards tacked to it. This team decided to start using a physical board the day after we did some training. Their first attempt was, as you can see here, some magic whiteboard put on a glass partition, glass wall. Each developer, tester, other team members looked at the work they currently had in play and they wrote out a card, a post-it note actually, and they put it on the work in progress column. The things they were actually working on on the day they put the new board up. They then looked at their notes and they wrote another card out, another post-it, for all the work they knew they had to do and they put it in the do column. And that was enough to get them started. That gave them their first board. It gave them their first view of the collective team status. One way to think about a team board is as a shared to-do list. You may have a to-do list, I have a to-do list, lots of people have to-do lists. When you're working as part of a team, it helps to have a shared to-do list and your board is your shared to-do list. If you don't have a board, it's as simple as that. Find yourself some space, find yourself some magic whiteboard, find yourself the back of a door if you need, you have some people do with cupboard doors. And just put up there the work you've currently got in play, the work that you'll be starting soon. And just start to see the work, talk about the work, perhaps hold your stand-up meetings around it. It doesn't have to be grand to get started. Rafts, we've talked about colour coding, we've talked about boards. Rafts are another way in which we can visualise our work. Rafts are great. Rafts bring numbers. Numbers can be so dry. Rafts bring numbers to life. Graphs help your understanding. This is perhaps the most popular type of graph you find in an Agile team. Some of you have seen it before. It's called a burn down chart. It shows the amount of work a team has to do and their progress towards getting it all done. There's a few points I'd argue with burn down charts, but on the whole, they are good. And you're far better off with a burn down chart than without a burn down chart. They help you get an understanding of what you're up against. They help you see your progress over in the days, weeks, iterations, ultimately months. Graph out the work you've got to do and how fast you're doing it. That simple. This is a cumulative flow diagram. Cumulative flow diagrams are much richer in information than burn down charts. The problem cumulative flow diagrams have is, compared to a burn down chart, they're a lot more complex. They take some more time to get your head around to understand a cumulative flow diagram. Once you master them, they're great. They are a very rich source of information. Again, like a burn down chart, they show you progress. They show you progress towards some goal. You can also derive a lot more data from them. Burn down charts, cumulative flow diagrams, other types of diagram variations on these diagrams, they're all rich sources of information. Please experiment with diagrams, graphs. When you see, you share. Two people can look at the same thing and you can talk about it. And you can talk about what you're seeing. You can talk about the way you interpret it. And if the other person is looking at it, interprets it differently or sees something different, you can talk about those differences. You can see what those differences are telling you. Those differences may well be valuable. If you haven't got a single thing to look at. If you can't see a shared understanding of the present, it's difficult to share your understanding. Being able to see something is being able to share something. When you share something, you can understand and other people can understand. You can come to a shared understanding. You can, become, you can do shared learning and then you can agree on a shared set of actions. Seeing is sharing. Visualise your work, find ways to see your work, understand your work, and see your problems. Find ways of seeing your problem. When you can see these things, you can find ways to make them better. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that short introduction to visualisation. Um, the next in this series is going to be iterations. 
As always, if you have any comments or suggestions or questions, please email me at that address. Thank you very much.